Most of the Shopify apps that you can find in the App Store, most of them uses the product API to easily customize the products of the App Store. Welcome to another part of advanced Shopify app tutorial series and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use the product API not to just display a list of product, but to also edit, delete, or even create a new product. If you're new to this series, we suggest watching the first part of this series. I'll put the link in the description or you can just click the i button which is located at the top right corner of this video. We'll start this video by opening our index.php file. Then, we'll just get rid of the echo statement since we don't really need to display that in our app. We want to make our index.php file as organized as possible, so we'll separate these lines of codes into a separate file which we'll name it header.php. So let's cut this out, head to FileZilla, hit right click, select create new file and name it header.php. Once the file is created, select the file, hit right click and select view or edit. Then create the PHP tags and inside, paste the code like so. Next, navigate back to your index.php file and use the function include once and reference the header.php file. And don't forget to save both of your files. In the previous video, we connected our Shopify app to our database. And because of that, we can now easily retrieve our access token from the database. So right over here, we have a conditional statement that checks if the shop URL exists in the database. If the value of MySQL num rows is less than one, then it will redirect the store to our install.php. Otherwise, if the value of MySQL num rows is one or not less than one, then that means that the store is in our database, which could also mean that there's already an access token being saved. So we'll add an else statement and we'll start our else statement by creating a new variable and use the function mysqli fetch a sock and pass the value of the check variable. That way we can finally retrieve the access token of our store. Next, create a new variable and give it the value of the shop URL, which is from the Shopify variable. Then create another variable for our access token. Also, if you want to check if the variables have values, you can use the echo statement like so. Now, if you save your scripts and open your Shopify app, you should be able to see that you have your Shopify URL and the access token being output. Awesome. Now let's start working with product API. We'll be using Bootstrap for our app, so it'll be much easier for you to follow along. Feel free to pause this video and copy the HTML code that I'll be adding to our index file. Don't worry, it's just an HTML code that references the files from Bootstrap. Once you're finished copying, save your scripts and check your app if everything is working. And there you have it. Now we have bootstrapped our app. Get it? Because boots. Okay, never mind. Now let's start using the API. Head back to your FileZilla, create a new file, and name it products.php. Once the file is created, select the file, hit right click, and select view or edit. Let's start by adding the PHP tags. We're not going to reference our header.php as well as the MySQL connect.php because what we're planning to do here is to reference the products.php instead in our index.php. Open your index file and right below the include once function, use another include once and reference the products.php. Then we'll just get rid of the hello world. We don't really need that anymore. Let's go back to our products.php. Inside the PHP tags, create a new variable and call it products. Then, we'll use the function Shopify call and give it the following arguments. The token, the shop URL, the API endpoint, which you can find it in the product API documentation. I'll put its link in the description. Then follow it with an empty array. And lastly, use get. Right below it, use the same variable and decode its response using the function JSON decode. All right, so we use the Shopify call function right over here in our products.php file. Now, what we need to do next is to update our index.php and reference the functions.php right over here. That way we can use the Shopify call function. If you don't reference the functions.php in your index file, you won't be able to use the function Shopify call. Now, to test if the API is working, you can just always use echo statement. And since it's an array, use it with a printr function. Now let's head back to our Shopify app and test it. There you have it. Now we have the products being listed. As you can see, there are plenty of data that you can use in your app. Now the next thing we're going to do is to use Bootstrap to make our app's interface as user-friendly as possible. So I'm right over here in Bootstrap's documentation and I'm looking at the card section. And what I want to do is to display our products kind of like this, where you can see the product image, the name of the product, etc. 
Another thing that I want to create is when we click the card, there should be a model or a pop-up that allows us to edit the product or delete the product and so on. So right below this preview, we can just copy the code snippet like so. And I'm just going to paste it in our products.php. Now we only need one div with a class of card. And so we're just going to get rid of everything below the first div. Also, we don't really need the paragraph tag below our header 5 tag. So you can just get rid of it. Next, we'll use for each to loop through our product since it's an array. Let's just move the first div tag from here to the top of our code, like so. Then, we'll move the child div inside our for each. Just make sure that the HTML is outside the PHP tags, otherwise it won't work and it will give you more errors. Next, right over here in the header 5 tag, which is the cart title, we'll replace its value with the title of a product. So type PHP, echo, and then value and use the title key. Make sure you close that. Now if you save your script and head back to your Shopify app and test it, and there you have it. Now we have our products display as cards. Now as you can see right over here, we have a missing image source. And for us to be able to display the product's images, we'll have to use another API and that is the product image API. So right before we output the card's HTML, we'll need to create another API call. And I know someone in the comments below asked about the cost of making API calls inside a loop. And I agree with that. Making API calls inside a looping statement can be expensive and that's why you must specify which data you want to retrieve. You can do that by using parameters or fields. We'll cover that in the future video, but for now, let's just focus on displaying the image of the products. So right over here, we have the same code. We'll just replace its API endpoint with the API endpoint from the product image API. Then we'll concatenate the ID of the product right over here and change the name of the variables. Next, right over here in the image tag, we'll replace its src value with the open PHP tag, echo statement, and use the image variable and locate the first image src like so. If you're not sure how this works, we first locate the images, which is a key inside our images variable. This key holds a set of array, which is the number of images inside the product. Then inside this index is an array once again that holds the data about the images. There you can find the ID of the image, the name of the image, the SRC or the URL of the image and so on. We're not going to get too deep into this because it uh, it's a little too long. So if you're interested, you can just read its official documentation. I'll put the link obviously in the description. All right, now we have our image just set up. Save the scripts and navigate to your app and check if everything is working. And voila, we have our image just being displayed. Very cool. However, it kind of looks so big and I kind of don't like that. So let's head back to our index.php file and add a new div tag after the body tag and use the class container. Don't forget to close the div tag after our PHP tags. And once you save your scripts, you should be able to see that our cards become smaller. That's much better. And that's pretty much it for now. We'll continue using the product API in the next video. I decided to cut it here for now so it won't make this video very, very long. So if you're interested, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you won't miss any of my uploads in this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.